Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian, a medical student from Australia, and you guys liked my last vlog, so welcome back to another productive day in my life in medical school. My alarm starts ringing at around 8.30, but because I slept a little late the night before, it's an absolute struggle to get out of bed. I take a few minutes to enjoy the warmth of my blankets, and finally get up, fix my bed, and open the blinds. It's important to get natural light into your room early in the morning to signal to your brain that the day has begun. I head into the bathroom, brush my teeth, and have a shower, spending a few minutes in there deep in my thoughts. It's winter here in Australia, which means long hot showers are the way to go. After putting on my favorite neighborhood pullover, I head downstairs to have some breakfast. It's important to start off every morning with a good breakfast. So for me, it's always Wheat Bix. And if you don't know what it is, it's these little things here. I polish off my usual eight Wheat Bix and start and join a Zoom call for a tutoring session with a new student of mine. I'm currently helping a few students prepare for the GAMSAT, which is the postgraduate medical exam in Australia, as well as some students preparing for medical school interviews. Today, we're working on improving interview skills by practicing different questions covering topics like ethics, personal qualities, and motivations to pursue medicine. Here's a snippet of what we talked about. I fell in love with um, the responsibilities the doctors had or how they showed just so much empathy when it came to talking with the, the patients or how they actually go through, and then I think you brought it up a little bit, but like how they go through a lot of stress and yet they still manage to hold themselves and be appropriate in different clinical situations. If you're preparing for medical school interviews or want to familiarize yourself with the process, feel free to check out my video series on medicine interviews where I cover common question types, the interview format, and how to prepare for it. After summarizing what we've gone through during the lesson, I sign off from the Zoom call and send through the session notes to my student. I then open up Chrome and load up Osmosis, who is also the kind sponsor of today's video. Osmosis is an online learning platform that provides resources for medical, nursing, and health students. With Prime membership, you get access to over 1,600 illustrated videos, as well as high-yield notes, flashcards, and case-based questions. Their videos provide a comprehensive, but also succinct overview of pathology, physiology, and pharmacology. Honestly, before they even reached out to me, Osmosis has been one of my go-to learning resources since I started medical school. So if you're a medical, nursing, or health student, I've included a link in my description box below, which will give you 40% off Prime membership. I'll also be doing a small giveaway at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. So I'm currently in my endocrinology block, which deals with hormones and the endocrine glands. Last week, we covered adrenal disorders, so I start reviewing Cushing syndrome, a condition caused by excessive levels of cortisol. It can be exogenous, meaning that it's caused by drugs like corticosteroids, or endogenous, where it's caused by an adrenal tumor or pituitary tumor leading to adrenal hypersecretion. As I read through the high yield osmosis notes, I come across a useful mnemonic for remembering some common signs and symptoms, BAM Cushingoid. And so after spending some time trying to commit that to memory, I sign out of osmosis and have some lunch. I'm feeling super lazy and not in the mood to put my terrible cooking skills to the test, so instead I heat up some leftover rice in the microwave and feast on a humble meal of tuna and rice. I throw in a banana to contribute to my daily fruit servings and head back upstairs to muck around on my phone. I scroll through social media, reply to a few friends, then load up Scritter, a Chinese loading app which helps you build vocabulary, and I smash out my daily reviews. At this point, it's a little after one o'clock and I decide it's a good time to catch up on any content I miss during the week. Here's a breakdown of what my usual week looks like. Every one of our weeks follows a similar sort of structure. So on Mondays, we have our clinical day where we get to go into hospital, practice our procedural skills, our clinical skills. It's the more hands-on component of our learning. And then we have three learning days and one day off. So on these three learning days, we can get given anywhere between 10 to 12 lectures and seminars. But because many of them are recorded online, I prefer to watch them later during the week because you can speed them up, slow them down. And because it's a Sunday, I'm looking at my list now and I have a few things to catch up on. I have some lectures on reproductive physiology and a few lectures on pregnancy. So I'm going to try and get through a bunch of them now. I start by watching a lecture on pelvic pain. And our lecturer stresses the importance of excluding pregnancy and then dives into a discussion of the common causes of acute pelvic pain, including ectopic pregnancy, adnexal masses, and acute pelvic inflammatory disease. Afterwards, I watch another lecture on the physiology of pregnancy. As I try to make sense of all the hormonal, metabolic, and physical changes that occur during pregnancy, I think of the immeasurable complexities that goes into creating a child. So with that said, huge virtual high five to all the mothers out there, especially to my own mum. you're the real MVP. Today's Sunday, so I decide to break up the study and catch up with my girlfriend. 
I put away my iPad, grab my bag and head over to the train station. It's about a 30 minute trip so I open up the app LingQ and play a Chinese audio story to practice my listening skills. I used to find long commutes to work or uni wasted parts of my day but I've started listening to podcasts and have been using learning apps on my phone like LingQ or Anki to make the most of my time. I now look at long bus or train trips as a relaxing way to learn something new or do some light study. I find Deb at the station and we browse through a cute little gift store called Morning Glory. We find a little Totoro, a character from a famous film by Hayao Miyazaki, and start regretting not buying more cute things like this on our trip to Japan last year. We end up getting this little rabbit keychain that finds a home on my bag next to a bodiless Iron Man. Just look how cute this little guy is. We leave the store, walk through the rainy streets and come across this cute cafe. A lot of people have asked me if I drink coffee and the answer is not really. I used to drink two to three cups a day during undergrad, but decided to cut it out after starting med school. And in fact, my girlfriend has got me on to drinking oolong tea. Our friend arrives at the cafe and I grab a taro latte to pair with this pretty matcha croissant. We polish off the croissant while catching up until our friend surprises us with mini Krispy Kremes. Deb's an absolute sucker for donuts and the original glazed ones are so, so good. So we nibble on a few and save the rest for later. Hours passed and what was meant to be a quick catch up at the cafe turns into an unplanned dinner. We make our way to a Korean restaurant, order a seafood pancake to share and feast on all the little side dishes and our tasty stews. Now on this channel, I talk a lot about studying and productivity but it's also important to spend time on your interests, hobbies, and passions. While we may often feel guilty when we're not studying or working hard, at the end of the day, study and work is simply one component of our lives. The reason why we work and strive for productivity is to have that extra time to spend with our family and friends and do the things we enjoy. So just remember to enjoy the time away from the books. It's all about balance. So after reflecting on this, I kick back and enjoy the rest of dinner guilt-free, and as it draws close to 8 p.m., we leave the restaurant feeling full and happy, and I take the train back home to do some light study to finish off the week. I unpack my bag, switch on my lighting setup to put me in a relaxing study mood, and then go through two more lectures from the week. The first covers histology of the male reproductive system, and the other covers male reproductive physiology. Contrary to my classmates, I've always really enjoyed histology as I'm a visual learner and I like looking at the different sections and the different images. So I do my best to differentiate between spermatogonia, spermatocytes and spermatids. I also learn a new fact about the blood testes barrier and how one of its functions is to prevent antigenic products of germ cell maturation from entering the circulation and generating an immune response. I just cracked out some lectures, now the last thing to do is my pre-work for tomorrow's clinical day. It's a Monday which means we're going to hospital and I think we have four tutorials scheduled. We have a tutorial on glucose monitoring, we have a physical examination and history taking tutorial. So we'll be going over the thyroid examination and reviewing how to take a diabetes history. And I think we're doing a workshop on working and learning in a clinical environment. And how I like to prepare for my clinical days is going over Tally and O'Connor's clinical examination and it covers so much content. So it's a really, really good resource to have. It has question boxes for histories and it goes over the clinical signs you're expected with different pathologies. I also like to use Geeky Medic sometimes because they really simplify things and they make it accessible, especially um, for me, who's more of a, a junior medical student. So I'm gonna try smash out some pre-work and then I'm gonna call that a night. I open up Tally and O'Connor's next to Geeky Medics as I watch a video on how to perform a thyroid examination. I read up on common clinical signs and thyroid pathology and review some questions you should ask during a thyroid history. For example, with a patient presenting with suspected hyperthyroidism, it's important to ask whether they have a family history of thyroid problems, any palpitations, loss of weight, muscle weakness, or recent exposure to iodine. Before I know it, it's after 11 p.m. and with my brain full of information for my classes tomorrow, I turn off my desk lights and start getting ready for bed. I brush my teeth, put on my comfy koala udi, and give a quick call to my girlfriend to say goodnight. I settle in and my day ends the same way it starts, with me lying in bed next to my penguin pal, Bruce. Well, that wraps up a productive day in my life. Big thanks to Osmosis for sponsoring this video. And if you too would like to start learning by Osmosis, you can sign up using the link below. We're also giving away three months of Prime membership. So if you'd like to go into the draw, just comment down below one study tip you use to help keep you productive. If you enjoyed the video, remember to hit that like button and subscribe to see more content like this. I've made plenty of videos about study tips, which I hope you'll find valuable. And I'll link a playlist with some of my other medical student vlogs if you wanted to check them out. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, this is Sebastian, stay sharp.